if this is your first time of being part of the Professionals and Entrepreneurs Fellowship, you are highly welcome. And of course, for our incredible regular members and participants, and of course, kingdom entrepreneurs and professionals of this community, it's always good to come together again every Monday morning, Cameroon time, 3.30 a.m., and of course, at 30 p.m. Central Time for those who are in North America and, of course, respective different countries where we have participants in about eight different countries. You are welcome anytime in the presence of God. And, of course, you know it's our tradition that every Monday before we start our week as Kingdom people who are in the marketplace on a daily basis, we're in the marketplace, either as professionals, as, as workers, or as business owners, it's important that we come to the presence of God, grow in, in faith, grow in the things of God, the ways of God, and of course, in the wisdom of God, and tarry in his presence in the place of prayer for empowerment. You know, the Bible says that he giveth power to make wealth. There are many people who struggle day and night to make wealth when they don't have the power to make wealth. You need power to make wealth. You need power to make wealth. You need spiritual power. You need wisdom power. You need expertise power. In our last retreat, I taught us on the seven dimensions of power for dominance. The Bible is not confused. God is not confused to say, I will give you power to make wealth. You don't make wealth without power. You need power to make wealth. And of course, we gather here every time in the presence of God to grow in the various dimensions of power that God is giving us so we can begin to dominate in the marketplace and take the kingdom of God into the marketplace in our careers and in our businesses. Before we take our testimonies, I would like to exhort us so that after our testimonies, we immediately go to the part four of our incredible series that we have been looking at um, in the last three weeks. We have been on this amazing series on how to move from slavery to dominion, how to move from living an average life to being a dominating uh, um, figure, personality in the marketplace or in the industry where you run your business. And we were taking time to dig deep into the kingdom secrets and systems on how to uh, uh, do this. And I remember I did give an assignment to all of us and challenging us that let us use these secrets and systems that I am sharing and develop a personal dominion blueprint. As I said, nobody rises to the place of dominion and success by guesswork. Nobody, even in the kingdom of God, you don't grow in spirituality by guesswork. It takes intentionality and diligence. The Bible says even God rewards those who diligently seek him, not those who assumely passively or guesswalkly, that's not English, but it's communication, right? You cannot guess what God and, and encounter him. Diligence is part of that. And it's, it, it, it's a key ingredient in anything that you do if you will rise to that place. So the challenge that I was given all of us to develop that dominion blueprint that we can begin to practice on a daily basis so we can get to that place of dominion is important because in this four part series, I have shared a lot of insight and strategies, uh, I'm mixing kingdom strategies and of course, marketplace strategies that we can use um, in order to experience that dominion in the work that we do because you cannot remain average. You cannot remain a slave. And I, in, in, in the first edition or the first part of the series, I took time to define who a slave is or what it means using the word slave. There are people that they are slaves to poverty. They are slaves to the wrong habits. They are slaves to their environments. They are slaves to their family background. They are slaves to a lot of things, slaves to their community, slaves to things that uh, they are not supposed to define you as a kingdom person that God created with the mandate to dominate and shine in whatever you do. Jesus was very intentional about this and he said, you are the light of the world and you are a city set upon a hill that cannot be hidden. Those statements are very powerful and he made them for a reason. And that's why this series is very important and this period is critical in our lives. And I hope that, let me just do a quick check. 
How many of you have been working on your blueprints for personal dominion? If you have been doing that, type me. Type me in the chat box. Type me in the comment section if you are following on Facebook or YouTube. If you have been working and developing your personal blueprint for dominion, type me in the chat box. Good. I'm happy to see that. Well done. That is it. That, that is how to get to the top. That is how to get to the top. All right. So um, before we share our testimonies, um, I want to exhort us with this scripture and then we share testimonies and I quickly go to the teaching and we round up this part, this four part series on from slavery um, to dominion. I was reading, I was studying my Bible and I came across this scripture a couple of days ago. And it's a very powerful scripture, Psalms 84, verse 10. Psalms 84, verse 10. The Bible says, For a day in your court is better than a thousand anywhere else. This is King David talking to God. For a day in your court is better than a thousand anywhere else. He continued and said, I would rather stand as a doorkeeper. You know, he preferred. I prefer to stand as a gate man at the threshold of your house than to live in the tents of the wicked or to live in the tents or in areas where you are not there, where your presence is not there. David was trying to communicate the incredible power. This was a king, a warrior, a priest, somebody who lived in a generation where he was recognized in the whole world as one of the most powerful kings and the most dominating figure and all of that in, in every single aspect, riches, uh, 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 um, military power, and in every single area, but yet he was still longing for the presence of God. He was still longing for the consistency to always appear before God. That's why he said, for a day in your courts, is better than a thousand anywhere else. This is very important for us. No matter the season that you are in, no matter the challenges that they're going through, no matter the difficulties, no matter the breakthroughs and the open doors and the lifting, one of your greatest desires, one of your greatest commitment and responsibility should always to be in the presence of God every single day. Because that is the only place where you can even find help or gain sustainability. What do I mean? You know, if you're in trouble and you instead run away from the presence of God, where else will you find help? Because only God can give you help. You can be in his presence and God can touch a heart, the heart of somebody. The Bible says the heart of kings are in his hand. And it can touch the heart of somebody or raise a, a, a divine helper from nowhere to come and help you. Or you, you have so many breakthroughs like most people do. They're in the presence of God when they are nobody, when they are broke, when they are struggling and all of that. When blessings start coming, when open doors start coming and many things start coming, what happens? They, they become very busy for God. And you know, the only way you can sustain the breakthrough that you gained is for you to keep doing what you are doing to gain it so you can keep rising from glory to glory. You cannot gain something by prayer and then you stop praying. You need to keep praying to maintain it because there is, no, there is nothing that you gain without maintaining, nothing. If you plant and when it starts growing, you need to maintain until... It grows and you harvest it. And even when you harvest, you need to go through the same process again if you're a farmer. If you buy a car, you don't, you, you don't just buy a car once and for all. When you buy a car, you, you, you use money to buy the car, you will need money to keep maintaining the car for how many years? If you build a house, you need money to keep maintaining the house for years and years and years. If you give birth to a child, you need to keep maintaining that child every single year until that child grows to maturity. You see, there is nothing that you receive without maintaining. So David is telling us the power 
of the present. So whether you're in your best period in your life or you're in your worst period in your life, your greatest and best place is in the court of God, is in the presence of God. I don't know. I just felt that I should talk about this. Maybe it's an encouragement for somebody. It's a reminder for somebody. It's a charge for somebody. It's a calling for somebody. Maybe you are in a space or you're in a period in your life where you're feeling discouraged. You have gone, you're going through challenges and difficulties and they have beaten you up and down and chaos and storms here and there. And sometimes you feel as if, is it still necessary to pray? Is it still necessary to live for God? Is it still necessary to wait upon him? Yes, it is still necessary. That is the only place you would truly find refuge. That is the only place you would truly find help that comes without any sorrow, that comes without any pain. You know, sometimes you may feel that your life is so terrible. Wait until you leave the presence of God before you see double trouble, before you start realizing that, you know what? I was safer in church. I was safer praying. I was safer living under the covering of God. And no matter what you're going through, know that there is always a place of glory. I can give you many examples. No matter what Job was going through, there was a place of double glory that was waiting for him. Despite the pit and Potiphar's house and the prison that Joseph went through, there was the second place in command in Pharaoh's house, and he became the second most powerful person on earth at that time. When Abraham was carrying Isaac to go and sacrifice, he was in pain, he was in difficulty. Do you know something? He did not know that God prepared a ram that was climbing on the other side of the mountain to meet him at the place of the altar or the place of the sacrifice. Let me tell you something. One thing I've learned about God in my life is when you serve him and you live under him and you surrender to him and you worship him every single day, there is always something God is doing behind the scenes for your favor. There is always something. Many a times you would never know it. You would never see it coming. But there is always something that he's doing. Your responsibility is to wait. Your responsibility is to keep praying. Your responsibility is to surrender. Because I can imagine Abraham climbing to sacrifice his only son. It was not easy. He was obeying, yes, but he was obeying with tears. Obeying with a heavy heart. Obeying with wondering. But he said, no, I am a friend of God. I obey the Lord. But you know what? There is nowhere, we only saw the ram in that particular verse. There's nowhere the Bible said that God prepared a ram for him. So God prepared something behind the scenes. I always just picture in my mind, as Abraham was climbing on the other side of the mountain, God prepared a miracle on the other side and he was climbing. As he was climbing, the ram was climbing. Let me tell you something. I don't know what phase you are in right now. As you are going through that phase, there is a big testimony on the other side that God has prepared that is also climbing with you. And there is a place where you and that testimony need to go and meet. The question is, will you keep climbing or will you give up? That's the question I have for you. That person that is going through a very difficult season right now. I want to ask you a question again. That testimony that God has prepared for you behind the scenes, will it meet you where God wants it to meet you or will you give up? Daniel did not know that God would shut up the mouth of the lion, but yet he trusted God and said, you better throw me in that lion's den, but I will not stop serving my God. But he didn't know that God already prepared a miracle to shut the mouth of the lion and make the lions his friends. You see, I've gone through difficult periods. Every day I see there's no human being that doesn't go through difficult periods. But when you understand certain things, that's what the Bible says, for we know that all things work together for good. Not some things, all things. But if you don't know something, you will give up many times and you'll always lose the blessings of God and the miracles of God. So you need to know these things. So that even those days that when you wake up from bed, you have no reason absolutely 
to lift up your holy hands and say, Father, thank you. You have no reason. When you look left, right, up, down, it's as if your life is in chaos and there is no single good news. No, you look beyond that and say, Father, I still have good health. Thank you. I am still able to wake up and breathe. Thank you. I don't know why I'm talking like this, but I believe I'm led by the Holy Spirit to say these things and encourage somebody that is not in a very good state. But I can guarantee you, God will soon show up for you. God will soon show you his salvation and his glory. He will soon reveal to you that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. He will soon reveal to you that when you tarry in his presence, you will definitely end up mounting up with wings like an eagle. Your responsibility and my responsibility is to trust him and to tarry and refuse to give up. And refuse to give up. Like I always teach you guys, many a times when the enemy wants to destroy somebody, he takes you away from three things. He takes you away from the place of prayer, from the place of Bible studies, and from the place of fellowship with brethren like this. Do you know why? When it takes you from this, from this place, you become vulnerable. That's when sadness enters your life. That's when depression enters your life. That's when anxiety enters your life. That's when fear enters your life. That's when thought of suicide enters your life. That's when you start doing things you are not supposed to do and you end up in a worst situation because there is nothing good about the devil. He only kills, steals, and destroys. There is nothing good about him. All right? God bless you, and I hope that you were motivated and you were challenged. And let's stay in this because we will soon testify in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, let's get two testimonies. I saw two people raised up their hands, and then we go to our teaching for today. Let's start with Kendria. Yes, go ahead in two minutes and share your testimony. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Doc. I'm so, so happy to share this testimony today. In short, I don't even know what to say, but I just know, I just hope God helps me to say what I have to say. Because I have gone through a very difficult season in my life, and you know, um, the um, dog gave me a prophecy like last year, last year, I think about November or so, that God was um, putting speed and career advancement in my life. So when I started, there was an exam I was supposed to write a competence test because when you live from um, countries out of the UK and you want to practice like a nurse in the UK, you have to do um, two competent tests. So I did the first competence test, the written part, and it was successful. When I started, um, I applied for the second, the second, which was a practical. I went for the first um, attempt. I failed the first attempt. I came back and I was like, my God, I don't understand how I've managed to fail this exam. I did the second attempt and I failed. And the one thing is when you do three attempts and you fail, you have to close your pro, uh, your portal for six months and you come back and reapply like a new um, applicant. So when I failed, failed the second time, I was so I was sure I was so heartbroken. I began to ask myself, God, before, because I've not actually experienced failure as to say I've failed before in my life. So I asked God that God, I've not been close to you before, but I did not feel now that I'm even close closer to you. I don't understand why I have to fail this exam. And you know very well. And also because we were going through a very difficult situation. For those that know what is going on in the UK, those that are on the healthcare visa, there is a lot of um, problems. And also my company, the agency I work for, there was there's no work. Like the whole of this time, I've not been working. I have bills to pay. I have this to pay. I'm always at home. I'm always like asking myself, God, is this the life you promised me that you're going to advance my career? But I'm not seeing this happen. But still, I will be patient and I will not lose my joy. So I kept on praying and I told Doc, Doc, fully prayed with me. So I went for the third attempt the last time and to God be the glory, I passed. I passed the third attempt. And one thing is the results even came out as earlier than I even expected. So right now I'm so, so happy to God that he has lifted me up where I, I just, I didn't even know where I was supposed to go to because I have been sitting home and asking myself, where is the way forward? And whenever my family calls, I'm just like, I'm fine, but deep down in me, <laughs> I'm never just fine. I just thank God because he knows where he has taken me praise to. Praise God, praise God. We praise God. We praise also, God. 
All things have been praying for in my family. I've seen his hand. He has answered my prayers. So I'm just grateful to him. I just Amen. pray that I never disappoint him. Amen. 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 Those are tears of joy. Those are tears of joy. Until, you know, this God is so good. That's all I can say. God is so, so good. God is so, so good. And, and you know, things always try, try to happen like this, and the enemy try to step in and do whatever he wants to do. But, you know, he, he doesn't know that God is always a step ahead of him, right? And, and, and this is the power of what I was just talking about. This is the power of what I was talking about. When in your most difficult season, hold on to the presence. Hold on to the altar. Sometimes you, you come to his presence, you don't even know how to pray again because your heart is heavy. Oh, I can tell you many times. You go to his presence, you don't even know how, you, do, you just sit quiet. That's what, you know, the Bible says you start groaning because you don't even know how, you don't even have words to, to pray. But you know, you, you don't leave there to go and watch a movie. You don't leave there to go and sleep. You stay there and say, Lord, my heart may be heavy. I may not have words to say, but I will sit here for the time I'm supposed to sit here and wait upon you. But the good news about our God is nobody holds on to him. Nobody holds on to him and he lets you down. He, 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 he will break protocols for your sake. He will do and undo for your sake. And you know, one of the most beautiful things about prophecy is it has a way of walking no matter the situation. It has a, as long as it was spoken by God. That is why I, I love this song by Sophila Sunday. He said, there's a prophecy over my head. Many a times you may not know what to do, but if there's a prophecy over your head, hold on to that prophecy. Lord, I don't care the chaos happening, but you told me this is who I'm supposed to be. This is my reality. You hang on that prophecy. One way or the other, your job is not to figure out how he will do with your job is to stay in faith and believe that he will do it. And of course, this does the beginning. This does the beginning. This does the beginning. Because the real manifestation of that prophecy has not started. The real manifestation. The manifestation is you in the marketplace. You are not yet, you, you are not yet fully in the marketplace. The real prophecy is still to manifest. When you now enter, you now see promotions, better opportunities. God connecting you to people that matter. God fast-tracking you. That is where the prophecy will be fully manifested. Things that others in the healthcare can take 10 years to achieve in a new country, God will give you in a shorter time. What people do in a couple of years, we will find you doing it in, in one year, in two years. The secret is the presence. Stay with him. Stay in his courts because there's no better place than his presence. God is super, super faithful in Jesus' name. All right. Let's see, was it Ransom? You had a testimony, right? Let me see. Yes, go ahead. Ransom, are you there? Right. Hello, good morning, doctor. Okay, good morning, Ransom, go ahead. Yeah, last three, I have a testimony, I think 2016 when I have my advanced level. Can you hear me, doctor? Yes, go ahead, we can hear you. Good morning, doctor. Yeah, 2016 when I have my advanced level, I went and applied in the University of Boyard. I was reading, um, I was reading anthropology, then strike came and stopped me for almost three years. I went back to study computer science. When I applied on computer science, they could not take me. So I was like, what am I going to do? Will I just stop the school or what? And they took me for plant physiology. I said, okay, I'm going to just take this. And after studying the plant physiology for almost four years, I could not still validate all the courses. I was kind of frustrated. The family have given up that you have been in the university for almost four years, nothing. What are you still doing there? Others completed in three years, but you are still there. Everybody was like, you have not serious. I was like, this thing is really hard on me. 
I put all my best, but it's not still going. I was kind of frustrated that what am I going to do? How am I going to even further my computer studies that I like, that I don't have money? I was like, okay, I'm just going to be praying and trusting on God while hustling for money to, to mm. further that part. After, yes. and I think what, what one morning when I was, when I joined the prayer and you told me I'll have a, yeah, that I'm going to, I'm going to, something is going to happen to me. And that week I just visited my uncle and was like, what have, how can I help you? I did not even know what to say. He was like, I'm going to, can you go look for any school since you, your intention was computer study. I know, I know you are not kind of frustrated though family is against you that you are not serious. I was like, go and look for any computer school and apply there. I'm going to pay. And so luckily I went and did that and he paid. And I'm now studying what a computer a software engineering in one professional school. I just want to thank God and testify God. for that. That's that's incredible. We praise God for that testimony. We praise God for touching the heart of your amazing uncle to step in. God, God is so good at raising men. For his people you know god always raise a man for his people raise even strangers raise even family members to step in and do that which under him can do in the name of jesus we praise god for those testimonies and of course god will be glorified in your lives and your lives will continue to be from glory to glory in jesus name father thank you for this moment thank you lord for these testimonies holy mm -hmm. spirit come you're welcome Come and reign in this place. Take over this meeting. It's in your name, in your glory, Lord, that we have gathered. Do that which only you can do in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, let's quickly get into, I'll teach for about 45 minutes and then we pray. Um, let's quickly get into our series. I, my plan is for us to complete this series. And of course, as we all know, um, next weekend or oh, by towards the end of this week, we have the month of March. And as you know, as our tradition, we fast and pray the first three days of every new month for our lives, careers, businesses, and all that we do as far as the works of our hands are concerned. And the, the, the incredible thing is, uh, during one of my Bible studies, um, God specifically just spoke and said, this is the theme, this is the focus, pray for these things in... Um, uh, uh, um, in the month of March. So we have the theme for the month of March. And, and something spectacular has been happening this week. Um, I always pray for PEF members. I was just generally pray for PEF members and all of that. Anytime, every day on my prayer line, prayer time, I always pray for, I would just say every member in PEF. And I begin to pray whatever the Lord lays in my heart or whatever the Holy Spirit is telling me. But this week, one thing was more spectacular that while I was praying, God was giving me names of people to pray for who are members of PEF. So God is definitely doing something incredible. And I know that God is faithful and he will be stepping up and doing that which under him can do in our lives, in our careers, in our businesses as kingdom entrepreneurs and professionals. All right, let's continue with our series on From Slavery to Dominion. If you're here for the first time, or you have not followed the last three teachings that we did on how to move from slavery to dominion, I will encourage you to go to my YouTube channel and uh, find that particular uh, uh, um, series because this is one of the most important things that we need to know Joy, but as, welcome as, to as, as, as a people. Because God is in the business of raising, you know, people in the marketplace who will uh, dominate. I just shared the link of the YouTube channel on the chat box so in case there are new members here. Because there are things that, this is a continuation of the teaching. And there are things that you need to understand spiritually and, of course, marketplace-driven, that when you balance them and you begin to execute them, you will definitely see those incredible changes in your career and, 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 and your business. All right. 
All right, I just want to celebrate my beautiful wife who is here, the most supportive partner that I know, right? She's always anywhere I am, she's there supporting and while, while learning and supporting at the same time, right? Can, can you just all go ahead? Don't be jealous. Just go ahead and give a shout out in the chat box. Just say, Mrs. Jaffney, I'm greeting you. I send you special greetings. All right. Awesome. All right. Let's get straight to our teaching as we look at the last part of this series. And of course, this is not the end of what I'll be teaching as far as dominating in the marketplace is concerned. There are many other things that God has been teaching me. I've even had um, dream encounters where God is telling me things that should be done or how to do certain things in order to rise in the place of influence and dominion for his glory. So there are things that I have not even taught as far as uh, um, you know, rising to the place where God wants us to be as kingdom entrepreneurs uh, and, and professionals. All right, so... We will continue today with, um, and we know we have been using Daniel as our blueprint. We've been using Daniel as our pattern to really understand because Daniel is a very critical, incredible example of somebody that was taken into captivity in a strange land. And while in that strange land, as a man of God, as somebody who carried the presence of God, he was able to rise to the top of that land. And at that time, Babylon was recognized as the most powerful empire and dynasty globally. You see, I always give an example and say it's like you, 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 you are taken captive from Cameroon, from Nigeria, from Liberia, from Ghana, and then you are brought to the United States, which is recognized at the moment as the most powerful economy and, and, and country uh, uh, in, in this present dispensation. And in less than no time, God begins to use you based on his gifting, his anointing, his power and his wisdom and his presence over your life. And then before you know it, he takes you to the White House and not just been there as an average worker, but you are a key decision maker. Because when you study the life of Daniel, you will see that there were things in that kingdom that the king was stranded and the advisors to the king, they were stranded and only Daniel could step in and cause a disruption that will move the kingdom forward. And at a certain point, they had to put him in command of certain regions and Despite that being, he did not only serve one king, he served a couple of kings. So he's a prime example for us to begin to study, to understand how do I rise from where I am, even though I may be in captivity, I may be average, I may be common right now, but how do I rise from where I am to a place or to that place where God wants me to be? So that's why we have been digging deep into the life of Daniel, picking out lessons, spiritual lessons, and of course, marketplace dominion lessons that we can implement in our lives and careers and businesses on a daily basis so we can manifest that which we are supposed to manifest. Because receiving a prophecy or understanding the purpose of God for who you are supposed to be is one thing, and the place of responsibility is another thing. There must be that partnership between that divinity and that human responsibility that produces an incredible life or incredible destiny. So we continue looking at, we, we took our time in the first two part of the series to focus on the spiritual part of it. And then the last two parts were focusing on the marketplace professional dimension that we can learn from Daniel's life. So we continue with the part four and the fit lesson that we could pick out and, or we can pick out from Daniel's life is that of, I like to call it the courage to stand alone in what you believe in. The courage to stand alone for what you believe in. You know, I think I've said this many times, one of the things I did in 2020, because in 2020 there was COVID-19, and I was not traveling as I used to travel because events were shut down, and I, sometimes I was sitting in the house for three months and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going anywhere. 
And one of the things that I did in 2020 that changed my life was that I took a time to read the biographies or how the top 100 richest companies in the world came into manifestation. And I was trying to read what brought these people to prominence and I was taking notes and trying to understand their dynamics and what they did. And out of the many things that I picked up for myself and I've been teaching in a couple of other meetings and conferences in different countries, one thing that I also picked about them was that these people stood for something. There is nobody that you will see at the top of their career, at the top of their industry in terms of business that they do not stand for something. And this is the same thing that we see in the life of Daniel. When you study Daniel chapter 1 verse 2, the Bible says, please test your servants for 10 days and let us be given some vegetables to eat and water to drink. So this is where Daniel was refusing to eat the food of that land where he was taken captive into. And he did not allow the laws of that land to force him or what everybody else was doing. He did not succumb to it. He was willing to stand in courage alone for what he believed in. And he spoke to the chef of the king and he said, Estos, this is what I prefer. But since you are worried, test, give us the water, give us the vegetables. If after 10 days, we are not still looking fresh. We are not looking, we are still not looking beautiful and handsome. Then we can succumb to eat whatever that the king cooks for his guest. So he was willing to stand alone for what he believes in. And he even gave conditions that look, if what I stand for fails, if what I stand for fails, then I will succumb to what you are suggesting. Courage to stand alone. Leaders don't succumb to everything. Leaders don't succumb because everybody's doing it doesn't mean they should do it. There is no way you can rise up to dominion and be different and be significant if you quickly copy what everybody's doing and do it like everybody else. You know, let me share a personal example. You know, I have personally grown up in the church per se. And, you know, Right, right back then, Kumbu, long time ago, um, we had a couple of friends and all of that. They used to laugh at me for the church. I used to go a lot, right? I used to, like, in our church, I used to go for Bible studies on every Tuesday. And then, you know, every Wednesdays, Bible studies, Fridays, prayer meeting. And then Saturday, I, I, we were in church for something else. Then Sunday, all of that. And since I was very close to the pastor and serving in church, sometimes you can go to church every single evening, Every day, like the whole month, there's always one thing or another to be done in church since you serve in church and all of that. So my friends started complaining. You know, on, if you have not gone to church, you have, you have not hold God the way that you have, some of your friends are not laughing at you. Then maybe you, you have not yet started dealing with God, right? Then one time, these are friends that childhood friends who went to school together, high school and all of that. And we were still close, but we had our own path in terms of spiritual understanding and what we have to do. Then one time, when we're just sitting somewhere and we're talking in Kumbo, and then I, I just finally made a statement and said, you know, I have chosen God. I've chosen church. You have chosen your own stuff and all of that. And I just made a funny statement and I said, let us take our parts. And of course, I've tried to evangelize them. I'll invite them to church once in a while and sometimes they will not come. Except they will come when there's a big event like Easter or Christmas or special Thanksgiving. That's when they will come and, and all of that. Then one time we we're talking and I said, okay, let's pick our parts. If we all arrive at the top a couple of years later, then we all pick the right path. If I arrive at the top and you don't arrive at the top, then I pick the right path, you pick the wrong path. If you arrive at the top and I fail, you pick the right path and I pick the wrong path. That was the argument that we had. But you know, the good news is now, my, I think the majority of them are Christians now, very committed in church, right? That's the good news about it. But the truth is that there was a difference. There was a difference in our career journeys. There was a difference in how God raised us. There was a difference in how certain things I started experiencing way earlier than all of the close friends that I grew up with. I was in, in my guys that I could call friends in the Cartier and schools. I was the first to travel abroad and do many things that they were not able to do, you see. And th that was some level of proof that, you know, 
You know, there is something more to God. It's not just about going to church. God actually has purpose, destinies, things that he gives his own. You just need to understand some secrets and do your part and see how God will partner with you and make you a testimony, right? So one thing we can learn from Daniel's life is the courage to stand for something. Let me bring it now to a more professional setting. As I was saying earlier, there is nobody you see rising to the top that doesn't stand for something that they believe in. This is why I fondly say, show me anybody who is everywhere and is not known for one thing that they that they do or one thing that they advocate for or one thing that they speak about, you, you hardly find that person doing incredible things because they, they, there is the economy and then under economies, there are industries or what you can call sectors and under sectors, there are companies, there are industry players. So you cannot be everywhere and expect to be known. That is why if you if I call Samuel at all, you think of sports and football. He picked an industry. He stood for it. If I call Dangote, you will think of business. And if you are more narrow-minded to, to, to narrow him down, you will see that he specialized in importation of, of household goods and cement and basic things that people consume on a daily basis. He focused on consumer goods. That he focused on cement, spaghetti, salt, um, um, uh, 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 refinery, everything that people consume every single day. He's, he picked a part and focused on it. Stand for something. If I mention um, um, Elon Musk, you remember technology, SpaceX, um, X, formerly known as Twitter, um, Tesla, uh, 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 PayPal, technology. If I talk of Mark Zuckerberg, social media comes to your mind. If I talk, if I start mentioning, you will see, if I mention in politics, Obama, I mention uh, 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 um, Tony Blair, I mentioned some names in politics in different countries, politics comes to your mind. That is what separates them from every average person. They picked an area. They picked a sector. They picked a path. And they developed the courage to stand in that path. You will not dominate if you don't have the courage to stand for something for a long time. It's very common in, 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 in Cameroon, Nigeria, and even many other African countries, where you see young people um, this year that they youth empowerment, next year they're in agriculture, the other day they're women empowerment, next, 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 next year they're in uh, what else? Technology. The other year they're in healthcare. Uh, the, today they are feminists. Tomorrow they are, uh, uh, they're just everywhere. Five years down the line, 10 years down the line, you cannot pick them and see that this is an expert in this industry. If you are listening to me and you cannot trace your life in the last five years, in the last three years, in the last 10 years, and you cannot see that you have picked a path and you have made up your mind that for your life as a person, you will be known in this industry and as somebody who represented a particular philosophy, you will find it difficult to have dominion. Even Jesus dominated because he stood for something. The kingdom of God and the gospel of salvation. Simple. He was not everywhere. One thing he did stood on that this. On that this. The kingdom of the father and his gospel of salvation. To who? To the kingdom and to the father. If you are listening to me and you have not picked a path, you have not picked up something to stand for, well, this is one of the pillars that until you get it, forget about dominion. Forget about dominion. Because you dominate in a particular area in the society. You dominate in a particular area in the society. Mm -hmm. Care, you can decide. If you are passionate about um, pregnant women, you're passionate about 
infants. You're passionate about diabetes. You're passionate about old people. You're passionate about young people. You're passionate about cancer research. Whatever. Pick something and stand for it. Have the courage to stand for it. Have the courage to advocate. Have the courage to communicate. Have the courage to represent. Have the courage to contribute. Have the courage to create. Have the courage to be known as the expert in that sector. You are in technology, pick a path. Will you focus on app development? Will you focus on website? Will you focus on SaaS? Will you focus on cybersecurity? Will you focus on digital media? Will you focus on whatever? Pick a path and have the courage to stand for it. Without that, dominion will be far from you. It will be far from you. Even in our king, in, in, in our Christian dog. If I start calling names of fathers in, in, in the faith, you will see that God called them into a path. When God, one of the signs that God calls you, he gives you. I know my mission. When God told me, he gave me, and that's why I'm not everywhere. He gave me something in particular. My ministry is primarily to entrepreneurs and professionals. And I have scriptures that he gave me to back up my calling. You see, even God himself, he calls people and he gives them specific missions, specific callings for a particular reason that complements his whole kingdom. I have a question for you listening to me. What do you stand for? Do you have the courage to stand for it? If I can end here, and we all, everybody listening to me right now, you can answer this question. We are good. There are many people that they have not entered their dimensions of manifestation because God is still waiting for you to pick a path and stand for it. Your 30 years plus, you cannot be pinpoint that this is the career path that you're building. You need to start thinking quick and making decisions. I always say one of the best things that can happen to somebody before you clock 25 years is for you to pick an industry and dedicate the rest of your life to become a professional in that industry. If you're here and you're still to clock 25, this is one of your major things you should be seeking for, not a birthday gift. The biggest birthday gift you can give yourself before you clock 25 is what is my industry path? What is my industry path? Then you develop the courage to stand for it. Go and read all the billionaires. I've read all their biographies. Go and read. One thing that you also find in their patterns is that there is nobody who became a billionaire without picking a particular path and trading that path every day for at least eight years. You will see that everybody who made it paid a price in picking a path and joining into that path of failing and learning, failing and learning for at least eight, some 10, some 15, some 20 years. Even Jesus took years, years to achieve his path that God called him into. Let's do a quick survey. I like to do surveys, right? Let's do a quick survey. If you have picked up a path and you are absolutely certain if you are 1,000% certain that you see, you see this path, do or die is me and this path. Till I grow old and I leave this world. Till God call me back home. This is my path. Type, type the word chosen. Go ahead, type the word chosen. If, if you are confused, there's nothing wrong with that. All of us were confused at one point. And it is confusion that gives birth to seeking. And when you seek, you find. Until you become confused, you will not seek anything. If you are confused, type the word confused. 
If you are confused, stop the word confused. Don't be shy. It's a challenge to yourself. Because when you become confused, when you hear teachings like this, you now go become a seeker of that which you're supposed to do. Now, to everybody that type the word chosen, your goal now, the assignment I was talking about, which is designing your dominion blueprint, you now need to use that assignment to answer to achieve this path that you have chosen. Because the path that you have chosen, choosing it is one thing. Manifesting it and seeing the reality is another thing. And this one thing we can learn from Daniel's life. Number six, what's the second lesson we can learn? The way, I've, the way I took long on this topic, I doubt I'm going to finish this series today. All right, let's continue. Number six. Number six, resilience in adversity. Resilience in adversity. Yes, we can see this in the life of Daniel. Anybody you see dominating, that person is married to resilience. That person has already come to a place in their life where they have made up their mind that it is future impossible tense for me to give up in this path that I have chosen. What may, whatever can come my way, storms and challenges and difficulties, they may come my way. I may even be locked up in prison. I may even be thrown into the lion's den. The goal is I picked a path, I developed the courage to stand for that path, and whatever adversity comes my way, I will face the adversity. Anything is permitted to happen, but I am not permitted to give up. We can see this in the life of Daniel. He stood for what he believed in, and they threatened to throw him in the lion's den, and he gladly accepted to face that adversity to be thrown in the lion's den. Resilience in adversity. Resilience in adversity is a key pillar in the journey of dominion. Daniel chapter 6 verse 10. The Bible says, now when Daniel knew that the document was signed, this was the document signed that he should not pray. But here's the funny thing. He went into his house. He continued to get down on his knees three times a day, praying and giving thanks before his God as he had been previously doing. Now, is this not mad? Is, is this not crazy? This is a level. Every time I read this about Daniel, I'm like, this kind of audacity. Now, a document has been signed. Now, picture yourself. When I read some things, I remove the character and I put myself in that place. Right? I put myself in that place. Now, picture yourself in that in Daniel's shoe. It has been signed that you can no longer pray. And the consequences of doing that which the king has signed against is death, or let us say brutal punishment. And you have no idea what that punishment will be. But after reading that very document, the Bible says Daniel knew that the document was signed. He was duly informed. He knew it. There's a comma there. And then the Bible says, he knew. It's like you read, you read this book, you're studying and you're reading. You see the degree against you, you drop it back, and then you turn. The Bible says he knew, comma, he went into his house and he continued to get down on his knees three times a day. I want to ask you a question. 
that path that you have chosen, that path that you have chosen, God forbid, but let's say you that path involves you having a business or an office or whatever, and you've invested all your life savings into it, and then fire comes from nowhere and consume it. Will you still trade that part? The worst case scenario, your worst fears happen. Will you still trade that part? But Daniel, he was between life and death. But despite that adversity, he was resolute. You know, one of my friends once said that destiny is like fighting a battle in Iraq. He was trying to say that until you've come to a place in your journey as far as destiny is concerned, and you don't realize that it's a matter of life and death. Because really, if you take out destiny from a man, then why are you existing? Why are you existing? To make children? To have sex up and down? And then what? After all of that, then what? What happens to you? Then who are you? What else do you have to offer? Nothing. You basically did not exist. You did not even leave. You existed, you did not leave. So Daniel is teaching us that if you will be respected as a thought leader, if you will be respected as a dominion personality, if you will be respected as somebody who did incredible things, you must come to a place. You must come to a resolute agreement with you and yourself that you see, this path that you have taken, challenges will come. Betrayers will come. Failures will come. Even some failures that will even cost you your heart and your kidney. People will break your heart. But it's to come to the place where, despite all of that, the way forward is forward. For many of us in this dispensation, we're lucky that there's no king to put us in any lion's den. So us is even better. For many of us, the worst that can happen is that we're going to lose money. That's the worst that can happen. You're not going to die. You're, you will not be threatened with anything. You will not be beaten. You will not be, you know. For some of us, the worst that can happen is that you'll be locked up in prison. So except you're in a gun violent zone, they can, they can shoot you dead. If you are in Christ, you gain more if you die. <laughs> right? That's not like, oh my goodness. No, that's life. Life is risk every day. People sit in their houses and people drive cars drunk and they drive cars into a house and they kill you. Every single day, life is a risk. We, we just thank God for grace and his protection and, and, and preservation by his power and his angels that many of us grow old. It's not because you are too intelligent or you're too uh, uh, um, cautious that you cannot die. It's just the hand of God over your life. It's not because you are bound on the presence of God and his mercy that he protects you every single day. But I want to challenge us. People that are like this, they pick a path. When things are fine, they are rising. When things are hard, they give up. After two years, they try again. Then they give up. They try again. Then they give up. They try again. Then they give up. They never become dominating personalities. They never build something that makes sense. However, people that end up experiencing dominion, no matter what comes their way, they are so resilient in the face of adversity like Daniel that the way up is up. Are challenges coming? Yes. Will they hit them? Yes. Whatever happens, you find a way 
to maneuver through that challenge and you keep going forward. This is one of the major reasons that many people have not entered their place of dominion. Because I can tell you, like one time I was teaching and I said, there are certain evidences that God will not entrust into you until you are able to make up your mind to trust him wholeheartedly. Because Daniel had a choice. Either he respected the king of kings or he respected the king of Babylon. He said, you know what? I am a man of God. I am a kingdom person. And in our kingdom, the king of kings comes first. And it's better to surrender and submit to the king of kings than to submit to an earthly king. The power of picking a path. There may be somebody right now going through a very serious adversity right now. Giving up will not contribute to your rising. But improving, learning, adapting, trusting God, waiting upon him, asking for wisdom, direction, telling him to instruct you in the way you should go, believing that if you, no matter what happens, he has the power, the capacity, the resources, and everything at his disposal to lift you up is the way to the top. It's a similar story with the friends of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They maintained the same resilient mindset in the face of adversity. They even made a statement and said, oh, king, we will not bow to your statue. So you go ahead and put us in the burning furnace. But you see, our God will save us. But, but even if he does not save us, we still not bow to you. Resilience in the face of adversity. You see, they came to a place, maybe like some of us right now, you're in a difficult season. You have fasted, you have prayed, but that particular problem is still looking at you face to face, eyeball to eyeball. With somebody who has spiritual resilience in the face of adversity, you make up your mind and you say, Lord, you see, whether you do this or not, I'm still going to appear before your presence every single day as we agreed. As per my covenant of coming before you every day at 5 a.m. to 6 a.m., I will still pray. I will still study the word. You know, this has happened to me many times. I'm praying for something for so long. It's not happening. So you know what? I'm not praying for it again. If you do it, fine. You don't do it, cool. I pick other prayer points. Many times I start praying for other people. But do I still trust him that he can do it? Yes. Because that's the only option. That's the best option that you have. And will, will he always show up? He will always show up. That's the good thing about God. The challenge is, for many of us humans, he will not show up at our own time. He will show up at his own time. But you see, one thing about God is, same. Certain things, the certain things that you cannot go through, or even if you are going through, you may feel that that is the worst, but it's made for something bigger. You know, when Lazarus died, people thought that was the worst case scenario, but they didn't know that God was using it to glorify his name and to make Lazarus famous and his sisters famous. You know, God is so good that he can... You can think you're going through shame and he has a perfect testimony waiting for you in a couple of weeks and a couple of months that when that testimony manifests, the shame that you went through, 
the disappointment that you went through, the pains that you went through become totally insignificant. You know, that's the word I like to call that a glorious testimony. A testimony that makes men to speak on the glorious things about you. You see, when, when they were throwing Daniel into the lion's den, the other advisors were glad and happy. Oh my goodness, lion just got some dinner and some lunch. But when they discovered that the lions became the friends of Daniel, that testimony overshadowed that disappointment that Daniel thought he had, or that shame, or that embarrassment that he thought he was going through. The good news about resilience in the face of adversity as a Christian is that as long as you hold on to God, there will be an evidence, an evidence that will activate a glorious testimony that will counteract and make your shame and your disappointment and your hurt and your pain totally insignificant. This is a word for somebody. And you will see the manifestation of this in your life, in the name of Jesus. Number seven, what is the seventh lesson that we can learn from Daniel in the journey of moving from slavery to dominion? Are you being blessed so far? Are you being blessed? This is a, I believe this is a destiny teaching. Are you being blessed? Are you being repositioned for destiny manifestation? This series on slavery to dominion it's a series that if you go through and make up your mind to practice all you learn, I believe you will see something incredible in the next 12 months of your life, something powerful. Lesson number seven. What is another incredible lesson we can pick out from Daniel in the journey to dominion? Visionary leadership. Visionary leadership. Daniel chapter 2, verse 19. The scriptures say that then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a vision of the night. And Daniel blessed the God of heaven. You know, Daniel was a visionary man. He believed that if he, the king told him the challenge, he had the vision, he had the belief, he had that, that, that long-term thinking that, why am I saying long-term? There are many people that they quickly conclude on themselves here based on the immediate circumstances. They forget about tomorrow. They forget about the next two years. They forget about what God can do in their lives in two months. You know, that's one of the major reasons people think about suicide and they commit suicide. Because they, they use whatever they're going through right now in their life and they conclude that this is the end of their life. They totally forget the possibilities that may happen. Even if you go to prison, there are still many possibilities that you can get out of prison after 27 years of Nelson Mandela and still be the president. What if Nelson Mandela committed suicide in prison in 27 years? Who would never have had the best story of leadership on earth so far. So visionary leadership keeps you going and seeing the long-term future despite your immediate circumstances. Despite what you're going through at the moment. It makes you see the possibilities. Never use your present circumstance and conclude on your next tomorrow. Every one of us right now, you have no idea what will happen tomorrow, Tuesday. It's Monday morning in Africa. It's Sunday evening in, in North America and different countries. You have no idea what will happen in the next 24 hours. So if you use your immediate circumstance and pain and, 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 and regret and what you've gone through, your mistakes and your errors right now, and you conclude that is all you are and that's all who you are, you are selling yourself very short. And you are doing yourself the greatest disservice more than a witch or a wizard. Because you have totally closed up 
and you have made up your mind as if there is no single possibility tomorrow waiting for you. No, there is a possibility. Even if you are in debt of 1 billion naira, 1 billion francs, 1 billion dollars, don't you believe that God can give you a business idea and in 12 months that business idea can make you a billionaire? It's possible. See possibilities. That's the power of visionary leadership. But Daniel demonstrated this in the sense that Daniel believed in waiting upon God. The king told him the problem. The king said, I had a dream. He didn't say, oh, it's very difficult or it cannot be solved. No. Somebody with visionary leadership and who believed that there's a possibility to say, you know what? I will go wait on my God and hear what he says. I have nothing try. I, 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 I have nothing to lose if I try. But of course, if you know your God and you have relationship with him and you're a man of faith, you're not just trying, you have confidence that something will come out of your waiting. You have to come to a place, listen to me very carefully, with visionary leadership, you have to come to a place in your career and in your business where you lead with foresight and clarity. Where you lead with foresight and clarity. And this will save you in the midst of your most difficult season. You will need to tap in that foresight. Look beyond the chaos now and believe in the possibilities that can happen after the chaos. But until you're clear, until you have that clarity and you have that foresight, you will not be able to believe in what can happen. One of the things I believe is also that I think Daniel was very comfortable entering the, the, the lion's den because he also believed in the possibility that, you know, I, I know this God. You know, I've read the Bible. I've read Genesis. I've read Exodus. I've read Numbers. I've read the Bible. You know, I know this, my God, as, as, as somebody who is from the kingdom of God, there are things I know about this, my God. There are certain characters I know about him. So I, I, I prefer to trust him than to trust the king. Foresight. Clarity. You know, there, there, there are seasons in your life where they may be very difficult. And because of what God did in your past, you can use that to gain clarity and trust God that this one will pass also. This season, he will end it. He will do something with this season. Clarity. Visionary leadership is also about having a blueprint. Let me ask me now what's a question. How many of you have ever taken time to take a fast and pray? And you know the power of fasting is fasting does not change God, but it changes you to hear God faster. Well, let me see, yeah, God, clearer. So that when you feed more, fasting means food weight, reduce food, reduce access to other things that pollute your soul or feed your soul more so that you can feed yourself more on spiritual information so that your tentacles are sharper to understand what God is trying to communicate to you or why you're seeking God for that season. So how many of you have taken a fast? Let's say three-day fast, seven-day fast. To me, I, I once did this, there was no day. It was just that, okay, when God tells me what I'm seeking for, then I'm going to stop. And it was for, Father, what do you want me to focus on between 2020 and 2030? 10 years. What, what, what is the plan? What, what should I focus on? Visionary leadership. Clarity. Foresight. Because no matter what will happen in the next 10 years of my life, there will be challenges, difficulties, hard seasons, 
But there's something I am convicted about that God told me when I waited upon him for the next 10 years of my life. There's something he told me. There's something he told me. So no matter the chaos and the failures and the difficulties and the backstabbing and the betrayals, there's something he told me. And you know, when the king speaks, nobody can undo it. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes that whatever the Lord does stands forever, endure it forever. You see? So when the king speaks, you trust him. No matter the season. Why? Because you have clarity. For we know that all things work together for good to those who are called according to his purpose. So what do you know? What do you know? Visionary leadership. If you would develop visionary leadership, you must have foresight and clarity the path that you have chosen. That career path. What are you seeing in 5, 10, 15, 20 years? What are the possibilities playing in your head? What is God by his spirit and his wisdom laying in your heart that may or may not happen in your journey? You need that as your pillar. Number eight, and then we pray. Emotional intelligence in negotiations. This is one of very one of the very big things that I find that leaders and entrepreneurs and professionals lack. Emotional intelligence in negotiations. Daniel chapter 2, verse 14. The Bible says, Then Daniel replied with discretion and wisdom to Ariok, the captain of the king's bodyguard, who had gone out to execute the wise men of Babylon. Very serious encounter. Daniel, talking to a captain, who was going to kill people, who was going to slaughter people. Imagine somebody following the orders of the king to go kill. Where do you intercept and try to find a way to redress that order or to turn that wrong decision into something better. Emotional intelligence in negotiations. The ability to navigate difficult conversations with wisdom. The Bible says, then Daniel replied, two key words, he replied a captain who was going to execute people, a king's bodyguard who was going to execute people. He replied him with two key words, in two key ways, discretion and wisdom. And these are things lacking in the lives of many people. Like on social media, camera social media, people just talk nonsense, bah, 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 bah. no discretion, no wisdom. They just talk, 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 comments anyhow. You can even find this in relationships and marriages. There are many marriages that will continuously do fine and be sweet day in, day out. If only the both spouses can know how to use discretion and wisdom in the way they communicate. Even if there is a challenge, even if there is a, a, a confrontation, Knowing how to use emotional intelligence in the midst of that conversation or negotiation will avoid disaster. Many things have ended up in disaster because the people driving the conversation in that particular situation lack two things, which we see in the life of Daniel. They lack discretion and wisdom. And this is something that you will not be able to rise to the top of your career or to the highest echelon in your journey if you don't have. Because you will always sit in tables with other wise people. You will always sit in tables with other great people. If you, you cannot desire greatness and be afraid of sitting 
in tables made of great people. And the only thing that can keep you in those rooms and in those tables as somebody who carries dominion and influence and success and blessings and honor and glory and riches is your ability to speak with discretion and wisdom. Many people, I was telling many people, many people, you talk too much. So of you, you post everything of your life on, on, on status. Small thing that you're eating, you post. Uh, small, everything, you put everything to show. Whatever you are, you post. You post no discretion, no wisdom in communication. You speak anyhow with your friend. You speak anyhow. You get angry anyhow. You talk anyhow. Everything is no discretion and no wisdom. No emotional intelligence in whatever you're saying. You don't navigate difficult conversation with wisdom. You just turn everything from frying pan to fire. And that's why you lose important relationships, important friends, important colleagues, important partners, because you have nothing to show for some people absolutely no wisdom. When they ask you a question, you cannot talk sense. You claim you're a professional in an industry, in a sector, talk now. You cannot construct a good, proper sentence in your industry. The language is not there. The keywords of that industry is not there. Data is not there. Information is not there. But you say you're a professional. So I have a first degree. I have a master's degree. Oh yeah, write a, an important document. Write a paper that can be submitted in another country, in another office, a three-page paper. Let us see if we can do business with you. Small three-page paper you cannot write that can communicate what you're talking about. No wisdom. You're praying, Father, bless me. Lord, breakthrough. Breakthrough means next level. Lord, promotion. Promotion means you will solve bigger problems, more responsibilities. Do you have the discretion and the wisdom to handle that promotion? Do you have the ability to navigate the difficult conversations in that promotion you are asking for? Lord, financial blessing. Lord, financial open doors. Okay, it's good. Do you have the wisdom to keep that money? Do you have the wisdom to multiply that money? Do you have the wisdom and the discretion to behave the way rich people behave in the society when they have that kind of money? I was asking one of my friends. I was asking him the way he was ranting on social media one time. I said, let's look at people that we respect in the business sector. How many of them go and rant nonsense like what you are ranting on social media? He was looking at me like that. Look at Tony Lumelo. Look at Dangute. Look at I put at people that we all respect in entrepreneurship. How many of them go and talk nonsense like you? You are looking at me like that. It's not grown. Discretion and wisdom. You want to be a leader. You want to become more influential and and, and lead and serve more people. As a wife, you can even serve and lead your husband the right way or be a good, respectable person. As a husband, you cannot lead your family or your wife the right way, but you want something bigger outside. We all need to grow because emotional intelligence in negotiations, in bracket, discretion and wisdom is critical. There are many of us listening to me right now. This is one of the biggest things that you have to change. Some of you, you have not been able to keep a good quality romantic relationship with a girl or a man that talks sense because you don't talk sense. You talk nonsense. That's why you only date area boys and area girls. You don't date and marry and date people that make sense because you don't even, you cannot match. You are down there, they are up there. They are like, you are beautiful, yes, but you, 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 you have absolutely nothing else to bring to my life. So you are you're forced to end up being downstairs. No discretion and no wisdom. Some of you, you are very, you are doing well, but maybe you got the relationship, but you got married, you stayed there, stagnated. You are not green, you are not regressing, you are just there. While the world is advancing faster every single day, you are just there. Nothing else to bring. No discretion, no wisdom. No ability to navigate with the changing world and the changing society. 
The Bible says, the Bible says, then Daniel replied with discretion and wisdom. I want to ask you a question. You stand before your divine helper today. He invites you for dinner. The president invites you for a meeting. The richest person in your community invites you for a talk. What will you say? Do you have what it takes to communicate with discretion and wisdom that they will find you valuable to partner with and to do business with? That they will find you valuable to entrust into you relevant projects for you to lead and to manage? That's the question I leave you with. There are many of us that we have not gone a step further. We have not moved a step further in our lives. You cannot even contribute to your family that you are, that, that you are part of to move a step further because you have no discretion and you have no wisdom to bring added value to your family or even to your own life. You are just there. Yeah, the, the highest you can do is write on social media, reply WhatsApp, do TikTok, chat up with friends, then do long calls. People that do long calls, one of the things that I, I don't know how to do is long calls. The only person that I can talk for more than is my wife. Any other person, I start feeling sick. I start feeling as if energy, my flesh is leaving my body. When you call me, let's talk, pop, 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 and done. We are done. And they'll talk and laugh 30 minutes, one hour, two hours, and they're gisting. Losing the most important asset you will never gain back. When time goes, it's gone. Every second ticking, every minute going, you are growing older. We have been here for the last two hours, right? You have grown older for two hours. And you have, you, are, you have been drawn closer to your grave for two hours. That's a fact of our life. So I want to challenge some of us. Many of us have missed out on divine helpers. Many of us have missed out on potential partners. Because when they called you, when they sent you a text, or when they sent an email, or when they sat down with you and they were talking, you guys were talking. You lacked discretion and you lacked wisdom. They did not get angry. They did not tell you, but the discussion just dried out. You now begin to pray midnight prayers. Father, every witch, every wizard, fighting my divine helpers, Holy Ghost, fire. If you pray harder, you are the one that will die. Because you, may, you are the witch or the wizard. Because God gave you the opportunity. He did his job and brought the people but you sent them away with lack of discretion and lack of wisdom. Even a young lady listening to me, God brought you the man that you were supposed to marry you. And lack of discretion, lack of wisdom, you lost the man. You know, this reminded me of something that I've not spoken to my wife about this. She will laugh about that. So one, one lady sent me a text and, and said that she she feel that she missed she missed the opportunity of, 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 of marrying me. I was like, what were you thinking? So she was, I, I, I took travel to a town and I, I got to know her very early, right? So so she, she thought that she was not, I don't know what she felt. But to me, I didn't see, I have things that I look for, right? Even in normal friends. But I don't feel that she had all of those things by then per se. But I'm just giving an example. There are people that can just avoid you silently because when they came closer to you, no discretion and no wisdom. Let me give you a quick chart as a roundup. Be careful. Next time when you're commenting on somebody's post on social media, think discretion and think wisdom. Next time you're posting things on your status, think discretion and think wisdom. Next time you want to share your picture or share something on social media in any public space, think discretion 
and think wisdom. This may sound basic. I've shared with you guys many times. If I've traveled 20 countries plus or so, more than 90% came through networks and friends on social media we have never met, just based on what I communicate and what I talk about on social media. That's how powerful it is. And through that, God begins to use those platforms to open more doors. And if I don't use discretion and wisdom, he will not use the social media to open more doors for me. Why are you blessed? It's time to pray. Why are you blessed today? I, I, I am not done with the series, actually. I still have... I still have one, two, three, four, five... I still have seven points to teach on this. Oh, my goodness. If there's one thing that I know that God taught, God has been teaching me on, is how to build influence and dominion in whatever you do, right? And I'm praying that I will explore all of this in Jesus' name. All right. So this series, part five, continues week after next, because this week is about fasting and prayers, right? It's going to be thunderous. It's going to be prophetic. It's going to be incredible. Invite somebody, remind somebody, prepare have expectations, come with prayer points, and get set to have an encounter with God. We'll have reminders towards that first, second, and third days of March to fast and pray and wait upon the Lord. All right, it's time to pray. First prayer point. Just one prayer point, and then we do our traditional praying for all prayer points that people have. The first prayer point is, Lord, give me the wisdom. Because in all of these things that I, am, that I am teaching, it is the wisdom of God that you will need to apply them in your life, career, and business. So just open your mouth and make that prayer point. Father, give me the wisdom. Just cry for the wisdom. Cry for the responsibility. Cry for that wisdom. Cry for that understanding in the name of Jesus. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead and do that. Just say, Father, give me the wisdom. Because there are many things that God desires to usher us into. But many of us have not taken that responsibility to enter into those dimensions because we, are, we don't have the wisdom to take that responsibility. God, by your spirit. Lord, by your spirit. Lord, by your spirit. Let me tell you something. It's very powerful to pray this prayer. And it's very powerful to live your life letting the Holy Spirit know that you're always ready to do what he tells you to do. Father, give me the wisdom. Give me the wisdom. Give me the strength and the grace to take that responsibility. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. All right, anybody, everybody, let's go ahead. If you have any particular prayer points, go ahead and begin to pray about it. Unmute yourself. Let's begin to pray for you. you have any particular prayer point that is in your heart for this week, Go ahead and begin to pray. Begin to pray. Let's pray briefly about it. If you have a particular prayer point that you would like us to partner and intercede for you, drop in the chat box. Let me let us pray about it. Go ahead, drop in the chat box. Just go ahead and begin to pray. If there's something you're expecting God to do, there is power in just opening up your mouth in faith and in the gathering of reverence. Yes, Lord, Father, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If anybody is sick here right now, if your son is sick, if you're sick, somebody is sick right now, like you said, your son is sick, just lay your hands wherever you're sick right now. I speak healing over your body in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare, let the healing hands of God rest over you right now in the name of Jesus. I command that sickness to go in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. Jesus took away that sickness and that pain. I command that sickness to go in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray for your daughter who is going for an interview today. Lord, let your favor rest upon her. Let your favor rest upon her. Lord, cover her. 
Cover her, O oh Father. Cover her with your favor as with a shield in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for your son and his wife that are expecting a baby. Lord, I speak safe delivery in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare safe delivery in the name of Jesus. I command obstacles to be lifted. I command challenges to be lifted. I decree and I declare your wife will give birth like a Hebrew woman in the name of Jesus Christ. It will be speedy in the name of Jesus. I pray for clarity, Lord, for those who are seeking you for clarity, for direction, and for guidance. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, by your spirit, direct them. By your spirit, oh God, direct them in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for the grace to be disciplined. Lord, I pray for the grace to be disciplined. I pray for the grace to be disciplined in the name of Jesus, the grace to be disciplined, the grace to be committed, the grace to be hardworking, the quickening spirit in the name of Jesus. I pray for those who are making business decisions. Let there be clarity in the name of Jesus. Receive clarity in the name of Jesus. Let the wisdom of God lead you in the name of Jesus. Let the Holy Spirit lead you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Isake Baba Le Sakala. Eseke Bande Sakata Sokoto Sekete Sakala. Father, I pray for miraculous intervention concerning the salary. Lord, I pray for miraculous intervention. I pray for miraculous intervention in the name of Jesus. Let there be a turnaround. Let there be a turnaround. Lord, assign your angels to take charge. Assign your angels to take charge in the name of Jesus. Let obstacles be lifted. Lord, make a way where there seems to be no way. Father, make a way where there seems to be no way. Let there be a way out, oh God, in the next 30 days. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I rebuke the spirit of delay in the name of Jesus. I come against the spirit of delay in that business in the name of Jesus. Let there be a way out in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Take the glory, Lord, for answered prayers. In the name of Jesus. Father, I lift up every expectation before you. Lord, show us mercy and intervene miraculously in the name of Jesus. Father, your word says that the children of Israel did not enter the promised land because they had the best weapons. Lord, they entered the promised land because they had you. Your word, your word says, oh God, they entered the promised land by the... By by, by your right hand, by your arm, and by the light of your presence. Lord, in every single expectation, Lord, let the light of your presence make a way in the name of Jesus. Father, go ahead and make a way where there seems to be no way. Lord, in every situation that seems impossible before man, Father, with you all things are possible. Lord, make a way in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for healing. Thank you, Lord, for vindications, and thank you, Lord, for divine direction in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you, everybody, and thank you so much for being part of today's session as usual. May God protect you as you go out, go and you're going out and you're coming in this week. Let the hand of God go ahead of you and sustain you in Jesus' name. See you next week. Uh, I'm not next week. Let me see, uh, when is the 1st of March? The 1st of March is um, uh, Friday, that means 3.30 Friday morning, for those who are in Cameroon, at 30 p.m. Central Time. For anybody in North America, you can convert that to your local time and different countries. We start our March fasting and prayers and wait upon the Lord, and we will see the faithfulness of God in the name of Jesus. God bless you, everybody. Invite somebody, continue to be an evangelist of the fellowship. Invite your entrepreneur friends and professionals and share the link with them and let them join and be blessed in Jesus' name. It's all about Jesus, all about his kingdom, and it's all about bringing more professionals and entrepreneurs to the kingdom, to the praise 
of his glory. Have a great week and you are highly favored in Jesus' name. Amen.